Hello and welcome to another edition of Currently in Quincy. I'm Joe Catalano and on today's show we will chat with Quincy School Superintendent Kevin Mulvey and Assistant Superintendent Aaron Perkins. We'll learn all about their school summer programs and more. First though, we check out the news for you. Quincy City Councilors continue to have questions about a plan to build a new home for Quincy College. During this past week's Finance Committee meeting, Ward 4 City Councilor Brian Palmucci agreed that Quincy College is an asset for its students, but he wants to make sure that the investment would be worthwhile. And I think it's an intrinsic value to Quincy that really can't be measured in dollars. Uh, it provides, as you mentioned, it provides a low cost alternative to the university system, which makes it available to more people as the statistics you provided uh, demonstrate. Uh, and especially with the course offerings that, that are uh, there that are geared toward employment, um, community colleges and Quincy College serve as an important path for economic empowerment for the, for the underprivileged. So um, it really, it really hits on every note in terms of who it impacts. Um, and with an average of about 20% of students who are Quincy residents, mm -hmm. it serves as a valuable resource for Quincy residents and for the community. Uh, for me, this discussion isn't about any of that, though. Um, we're in a finance committee hearing um, discussing a bond author requ authorization request from the mayor. This is 100% about money, and that's it for now. Um, Ultimately, whether I support this request will depend on the response, the, 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 the general overall response that I get to one question that I have in my head, which is whether Quincy College can be saved. You know, is the trajectory down or up? And whether it's worthy of, financially worthy of this type of investment, given the many dem demands on our public, public dollars. Mayor Thomas Koch is requesting an initial $23 million to purchase the Monroe Building in Quincy Center. The overall plan would involve demolishing that building and putting up a new 15-story structure for the college and for city offices that would come from the glass building of City Hall, which would also be torn down. The overall cost for the plan is estimated at $100 million. City councilors this week did approve over $150 million for improvements to roads and water and sewer systems across Quincy for years to come. Officials voted to borrow $100 million just to make road improvements in every ward of the city, $40 million for improvements to the drinking water system, and over $13 million in upgrades to the sewer system and for stormwater management. The Quincy DPW Commissioner Al Grazioso said the plan will be implemented regardless of who's in control of his department. At the kind, kind words, Councilor, I will say this. The plan we put in place is a plan. We have an excellent team down here at DPW. And sure we, have, we have, we have sure excellent do. consultants. Um, we have Bader Engineering with us this evening. Um, our plan is to be put in place in no matter who's in this position, uh, there'll be a, this is a this is a five to seven year plan that that once it's in place, we will we will execute this plan. And it's the people in this department that make the plan work. It's not it's not just me. I'm the head of it, but it's a team effort. And we have great people down here. And that's why the plan works so well. The one hundred million dollars will come from the general fund. The rest from the water and sewer enterprise funds, which are paid into by ratepayers. That Weymouth man charged with stabbing three men outside of Rags Tavern on Washington Street in Quincy Point early Sunday morning is now being held without bail. 24-year-old Tyler McLean pleaded not guilty to attempted murder charges in Quincy District Court this week after police say he stabbed three 21-year-old men during a fight in the parking lot at about 1 a.m. on Sunday. One victim was being treated for serious injuries at Boston Medical Center. Two others were at South Shore Hospital for less severe injuries. Police say the fight may have started on social media or by text messaging. McLean is due back in court next month for a dangerousness hearing. Well, the Cliveden Street extension across Hancock Street in Quincy Center is now open. The lengthening of Cliveden Street is part of a multi-million dollar project to make way for the extended road and the new General's Bridge off Bergen Parkway over the MBTA tracks. 
Officials say the project will pave the way for future development in Quincy Center. And residents of the new Nova Quincy Apartments now have access to a new pedestrian promenade with green space and historic style streetlights. The new bridge is expected to be dedicated on the 20th anniversary of the September 11th terrorist attacks. The name of a Quincy veteran who served in the Vietnam War has been added to the Memorial Clock Tower at Marina Bay. Walter Fabian Jr.'s name has been engraved into the granite monument. It was honored during the annual ceremony yesterday to remember all the Quincy Vietnam War veterans who gave their lives during that conflict. Fabian's name was the 49th added to the Clock Tower Memorial. That 85-foot-high memorial was dedicated back in 1987. Coming up, Quincy School Superintendent Kevin Mulvey and Assistant Superintendent Aaron Perkins next. The COVID vaccine is a critical tool to protect yourself and in the pandemic. But you might have questions about its safety. The same safety measures used for all vaccines were used for the COVID vaccine. Tens of thousands participated in vaccine trials to prove it's safe. Since then, millions of people of all races and ethnicities have gotten the vaccine and experienced only mild side effects. I got the vaccine to protect myself, my family, and my patients. When it's your turn, trust the facts, get the vax. We the people of Quincy have been stuck due to this pandemic. Society has come to a quick halt. However, Cleaner Greener Quincy is coming back on May 1st. T-shirts for volunteers will be provided by the Quincy Parks Conservancy. Tools, trash bags, trash gloves, and trash pickup will be provided by the City of Quincy. The cleanup is from 9 a.m. to noon. To register, call 617-376-1251 or email pdoherty at quincyma.gov. Our beautiful city really needs your help. Looking for a safe place for girls to get inspired, seek out new challenges, build important skills, and take the lead? That's the Girl Scouts, where every girl has the space and support to reach their full potential. Girl Scouts prepares girls to be their best, bravest, boldest selves. The benefits go beyond the badges and awards they earn to recognition of the new skills they learn. Whether it's finishing a school project, making a new friend, or speaking up for what's right, a Girl Scout faces the world with confidence and optimism. Troops are forming now. Join today. hear someone go, didn't it come from you guys? Strangers cough at me. Move away from me. Someone spit towards my direction. All the stereotypes that we've worked so hard to break are just gonna be reversed. And I won't let that happen. We all have to play our part. I donate my plasma. I've been making masks. We deserve respect as much as everybody else. I'm a firefighter, not a virus. I'm a mask maker, not a virus. I'm a nurse. I'm a delivery woman. Chef. A neighbor. Artist. Bus driver. I'm a doctor. Fight, Fight the virus. Fight the virus. Fight the virus. So we're really pleased to be uh, checking back in with Quincy School Superintendents Kevin Mulvey and Assistant Superintendent Aaron Perkins for a little update on how the Quincy Public Schools are doing uh, during these interesting times and also uh, look ahead to uh, brighter times over the summertime. So Mr. Mulvey and uh, Aaron, nice to see you both. Thanks for joining me. Joe, great to see you. Thank you very much. And thank you for allowing us to come back on the show again. We really appreciate it. Oh, it's my pleasure. I really appreciate you taking the time to chat with us about it. I know folks are curious as to uh, how the schools are doing and also what uh, the future plans uh, hold. So maybe we could start maybe with just a little update on how uh, in-person learning is going now that it's, it's full on, right, for all grade levels. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, um, we are um, full in-person for any student that would like to attend full in-person. They're certainly able to do so. Uh, we've essentially been that way since March 29th, which is great. You may have seen that today the commissioner has issued a statewide directive for at least the high schools to go back to in-person. But here in Quincy, we have all grades back in in-person and we've had that for, um, let's see, almost a month now. So, um, and things are going very well. Mrs. Perkins and I have visited all of the schools and we uh, 
we are exceedingly happy at seeing the smiles on the uh, students' faces uh, and just uh, the chatter within the schools that really they haven't, uh, it hasn't been there. It's been eerily quiet up until the return of the students to school, but now we have the laughter and the fun and most importantly, the learning going on in the schools uh, and we're very happy to see it. Any kind of sense as for how many have opted to come back and how many are still doing uh, remote? Uh, the last time I reported at school committee and we have another meeting on the 5th, it was about, uh, I think it was about 52% were in person and about 48% were still electing to stay remote. And is there any hybrid learning going on at all now, or is it just one or the other? Uh, there is a small amount of hybrid learning going on, um, but mostly, um, and those are just uh, individual circumstances of students that may need it, but mostly it is um, full in person or remote at this point. And is the pooled testing program still ongoing? It is, um, and that, that program um, is expanding uh, each week, more and more people join it. Um, I think I'll hand this question over to Mrs. Perkins because she's our in-house expert on pool testing as well as our coordinator of health services, Rita Bailey. But both Mrs. Perkins and Mrs. Bailey have been doing a great job with regard to the pool testing, pool testing initiative here in Quincy. And it has really, uh, before I hand it over to Mrs. Perkins, I can just say it, it really has... Uh, uh, supported our position that we have zero uh, in school transmission um, between students and staff or staff and students, which is great. Um, but for the details of the initiative, Mrs. Perkins can, can walk you through that. Great. Thank you. Yeah. So we are doing it in every grade now. Um, so all the way up through high school and uh, students are tested once a week. Um, and their swabs are placed into a pool. The pools range from around five to seven, you know, students and staff. Um, and then we typically get the results back in the next, you know, within the next day, within 24 hours. And we're able to do any necessary follow-up testing if, if by chance a pool was positive, where we've been able to do it right at the site and identify the individual immediately. Uh, and then, you know, we go into our normal contact tracing routine. But it's, it's been, the, the kids are amazing. It's been really excellent. Um, and we've had very, very few positive pools. So our, we're, you know, we're happy to report our positivity rate is, you know, probably somewhere, depending on the week, it's anywhere from zero to, you know, 0 0.40. I mean, it's really, it's very, very small. Sure. And is that also uh, teachers and staff, uh, Mrs. Perkins? Yes, it's, it's teachers and staff. And it's voluntary, is that right? Mm -hmm. It's voluntary, yep. And will this continue through the end of the school year? It's going to continue through the end of the school year and also in the summer as well. So the state has um, released information that allows us to, they're going to continue to fund it uh, throughout the course of any summer programs that we run as well. Yeah, which leads me to uh, really the, the real purpose for our, our chat today is uh, a robust, robust summer program planned in Quincy, right? Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Um, we have uh, myself, Mrs. Perkins, and the SLT have been working on really a, a very massive program for our kids this summer. That would be grades K to 12, also special education program, um, some bridges programs from obviously the um, eighth grade into high school. Uh, so we have a significant amount of initiatives covering all grades, trying to reach as many students as we possibly can to assist with uh, the students' return to school, hopefully full in-person for everyone uh, in September of 2021. Yeah, dude, is this kind of trying to make up for lost time, if you will, or make up for lost in-person learning at least? Well, there's always, uh, there's always room for improvement, particularly with regard to learning. And I know in uh, many districts, Mrs. Perkins and I are members of the Urban Superintendents Group, and I know many of their urban school districts are really struggling with even getting back into uh, hybrid and full in person. Um, fortunately here in Quincy with the support of the school committee and the mayor, and of course all of our staff, professional staff and non-professional staff, we have been able to obviously return to full in person as of March 29th. 
Um, and it's certainly, I know in some districts they're calling it a wasted year or a lost year. That's certainly not the case here in Quincy. Uh, but even with that, uh, again, with the support of the mayor and the school committee, we're dedicated to advancing our kids educationally as much as possible. That's why um, we have put together this uh, summer program to help, to help with that goal. Yeah, what will actually be offered and how will students be able to participate in it? Mrs. Perkins, would you like to review that? Yes, I definitely will. So we're offering, you know, we kind of, when we set it up, we, we identified, you know, our uh, priorities and, you know, our first priority for our summer program, as Mr. Mulvey said, was to get as many students as possible to participate and actually come in person to our summer program offerings. So, you know, you mentioned kind of the idea of remediation and um, dealing with any lost learning that occurred over the school year. So that's definitely a focus and we wanna make sure that we provide those services for our students who need them. But, you know, really our overarching goal is to get as many students as, as we can to participate in something, you know, even if it's only for a week, so that they, especially our remote students that have not entered our school buildings in over a year and a half in some cases, that we are encouraging them and supporting them to, you know, that re-entry into what school life will be in September. And so, um, you know, so we have our traditional remedial program, which is called Bridge to Reading and Math that will support students who have had, um, you know, some struggles with learning throughout the course of the year and that need that extra support. Um, there's also a middle school program that's called uh, Summer Boost, which um, helps students who, again, need that kind of remedial support um, or additional support over the summer. We also have our traditional special education programs that we run and have run. And actually last summer, we were one of the only districts in the state to offer in person for our special education uh, program. So I remember we'll, this. yeah, we'll run those as well. And we'll, we, we are mandated in special education. We have to offer an in-person and a remote option. Okay. So both of those will be available, although we strongly encourage our families to, you know, if they're comfortable to send their students in in-person. Then we're, we also, we're trying to plan some things that just may grab students' attention so that we can engage them and get them involved again in their school, school community. So we're offering uh, programs at different times throughout the summer. So we have Bright from the Start, which is, you know, for our younger students, that is for students entering first uh, grade and second grade. Um, and that is a transitional program to try to get them back kind of in the routine. It will be at the end of the summer you know, end of August, right before school starts to get them introduced and give them a little boost before um, we start the school year. We also have our Bridge to High School program, which I think uh, Superintendent Mulvey was referring to, which is to support that transition between eighth and ninth grade. We have uh, opportunities for advanced learners. We have Knowledge Quest at the elementary school, which is a project-based program. Um, and then in Advanced Learning uh, Academy at the middle school level, we have SAT prep, we have credit recovery for our high school students that need that support. Um, we're going to have uh, book clubs that will kind of be a little bit of a hybrid. We'll do some in-person and, um, and some uh, remote, you know, and hopefully get our kids over to the library and uh, partnering with the Thomas Crane Library to get our students you know, over meeting them over there to uh, introduce them to, you know, taking out books and getting a library card and all of those, those great skills. Um, and then we have a civics course, uh, super civics for students who are interested in, you know, learning more about our city and government um, and how that all functions. And uh, we're, we're really excited to be offering that as well. So we have those, that's just kind of a sampling. We have STEM um, sessions that we're going to be running. So we have really tried to fit math. <laughs> We've tried to kind of tackle, you know, all the different areas and offer something for everyone. Our, our, I'm sorry, go ahead, Mr. Molly. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. Uh, I was just going to curious, are teachers kind of being on the lookout for students that they think might benefit, you know, from some, uh, from some summer programs and trying to identify those and, and, uh, and encourage them and their parents to get involved? <laughs> Yes, absolutely. So our Bridge to Reading and our Summer Boost programs, as well as our Credit Recovery programs, are invitation-based programs. So 
for students that need that additional support, they will be, they, we will definitely be targeting those students and working with those families, um, you know, to help them, you know, kind of get involved in that summer program so that we can give them that extra support. Right. And is there um, a registration process and is there a cost for any of this? So thanks to the generosity of the mayor, there is no cost, which is really quite unbelievable. Um, we're so excited and thankful for that opportunity. Um, and so there is there is a registration process. Actually, the summer brochure uh, will be going out in the community notices in the in our newsletter on Friday. Uh, and the registration links to the individual programs are will be linked right in the program brochure. Okay, and is it all at all schools that these are happening? So uh, not every school will house a program, um, you know, so we'll, we'll, you know, we do have sites like Central and Point Webster and Clifford Marshall, Southwest, um, Snug Harbor that are kind of our traditional summer program locations. And then some of the other programs, we may vary a little bit and some may depend on interest. So, you know, our STEM Academy, for instance, um, might be located, you know, at Beachwood Knoll, if we have a, a you know, a group of students from Beachwood, Atherton, and Marymount say that, you know, I'll want to participate. So depending on enrollment, you know, we'll, we'll kind of vary the, um, the different locations for the programs. Sure. And is there um, transportation available over the summertime? There is, yep. Especially to our, um, to our big programs, like mm -hmm. our Boost and our, um, and our uh, Bridge to Reading that's in math that's held at Clifford Marshall. Those do all include transportation, as well as the special education programs and programs like that. Okay. And I'm assuming the Grab and Go meal program will be back in earnest as well? Yes, it will. Yep. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Sarah, our Food Service Director, Sarah Dufour, and her assistant, uh, Jane Minton, have been doing a fantastic job throughout, well, really since the pandemic began. And so the uh, food service production will continue, I'm happy to report. Um, and we also heard uh, last week that all of the lunches for students next year uh, will also be free, oh. uh, which, which is great. So no charge for lunches K to 12 next year for, for our students, which, which is great. But um, Ms. Stufor and Ms. Minton have been doing an excellent job with regard to making sure that all of our students and their families are getting the nutritional needs um, you know, that they require. So they're doing a great job. Yeah. Will there be any um, athletic programs over the summertime at all? Um, that's something that we're going to be working with the Quincy Recreation Department on, okay. and, and we want to coordinate so that it doesn't necessarily interfere or overlap with, to the best of our ability, um, with the educational programming that we have. Um, but we also, we want to, we, we know that our students need that social emotional support, uh, which uh, athletics and extracurricular activities like Quincy Recreation Department uh, provide. Um, that's something that they would certainly want to avail themselves of and certainly something that we want to provide. So we'll be working with Mr. Murphy and Ms. Hanley to put together a program uh, to address those needs as well. Very good. What is the current um, status of the MCAS? As I understand, um, it's been exempt now for the class of 2022. Is that right? Yes, Mrs. Perkins, would you like to feel that yes. one? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. So that is correct. Um, and that we are still, um, you know, having to administer the MCAS in grades three to eight. And they did just announce maybe two weeks or so ago that there is going to be a remote option. Oh. Um, so we, you know, we're still, we have actually have a, as the school staff, the principals have a training on that actually this Thursday with the state where we'll get more information about how that's going to work and how that will be administered. Okay. Um, do you think that was a good choice to do that? Uh, to do the MCAS or just in remote or just kind of the MCAS in general? <laughs> to, to, to exempt the, uh, the, the class of 2022 from that requirement right now. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I, I do. I mean, I think these students have been through enough. I, I don't think, you know, they've had so much taken away from them that would have been, you know, in a, in a traditional year and, you know, everyone's done a great job and made the best of it, you know, in a really difficult situation. And so I think that's the least we could do is give them a break with the MCAS. I, yeah. I don't, you know, I think they'll still go on and be very successful without the MCAS. Speaking of traditions, um, Mr. Mulvey, has any decision been made about proms this year? 
Uh, yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm happy to report that working with the mayor's office um, and also Commissioner Paul Hines and Commissioner David Murphy, we are putting together a, um, a prom alternative event, I guess, for lack of a better term, and uh, we are planning to have that up at the uh, Upper Marymount Park, like right by the uh, fountain, just mm -hmm. next to the Veterans Stadium. There's a parking lot there, and we are planning on um, through Mr. Hines's office, providing a very, very large tent as well as all the necessary amenities in order to host an event like that and do it safely, of course, following all the regulations. There will be obviously food and beverages provided. There'll be music provided. Um, but we want to make sure that this class, the senior class in particular, um, has a, an event that they can remember. And we're working with the uh, parent volunteers at each school. So there'll be a, a senior prom event for both North Quincy and Quincy High, uh, one on June 18th and one on June 19th. Um, and we're working with parents to put together events and activities and prizes and that sort of thing. Um, but um, I think that in particular for this class, because as you know, they missed not only potentially their senior prom this year, but their junior prom last year, um, unlike the previous class that just missed their senior prom. Uh, so we had to make sure we did something for this class and we think that this will be something they'll certainly enjoy and certainly remember and they can celebrate um, the great accomplishment of graduating from the Quincy Public Schools. Oh, well, that's great. It actually might be more memorable uh, for them <laughs> as opposed to the quote unquote traditional prom. Absolutely. Yes. And we're hoping the weather is good so they can get their pictures taken at the fountain up at Upper Marymount. And it will be hopefully a, a beautiful night and a beautiful time for, for, for those students. So Nice. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, of course, the other big tradition every year is graduation. Uh, what will be happening this year? Yes, again, um, working with uh, the mayor's office and the uh, commissioner of buildings and commissioner of parks, we're um, working uh, to have a, um, a one graduation. As you know, last year we had to split it up because of the size of the classes, um, but this year we're working and determined, determined to have the um, classes brought together for one graduation. We believe the uh, stadium is large enough to make this happen. The mayor is uh, assisting with adding additional uh, seating for guests, bringing in portable uh, bleachers and that sort of thing. And we believe because of the size of the stadium, and Quincy is very fortunate to have such a large stadium, we can safely accommodate uh, the graduation for North Quincy and Quincy on one night, hopefully it's a, again, weather-wise, I hope it's a good night so we don't have to uh, go to the weather day, um, but we can safely accommodate and have uh, graduation for both North Quincy and Quincy High, again, celebrating their great accomplishment. Wow, we're having red and blue together on the field. How about that? How many uh, in the class of uh, 2021 from both schools? Um, so the, I believe the numbers are, for North Quincy High School, I believe just under 400, and North Quincy High is around 330 or thereabouts. Okay. And is, has there been a date selected? Yep, there is. So I, I should clarify, there's going to be a, a, a separate event for Quincy High and a separate graduation for North Quincy oh, High. Oh, okay. I thought we're starting a new tradition here. Okay. Yeah, no, we're not combining. That would be, yeah, that would be too big. Okay. Uh, but we, we can safely accommodate a graduation ceremony for each school. So on uh, G Monday, June 7th would be Quincy High and Tuesday, June 8th would be North Quincy High. Okay. Weather, as you say, weather permitting, obviously. Weather permitting, yes. Yeah. And again, all the social distancing mask requirements that, that'll be in place uh, will be uh, in place once again this year. Yes. Yeah, so we'll have to limit the number of guests, of course, that each graduate can bring. Um, the most likely two. Um, guests, family members that could come to celebrate the night with their student. Um, but all of those details, we're, we have a final meeting scheduled for this Friday, and we should be able to get out all the details on how graduation will work um, shortly thereafter. Sure. Curious, back to the summer programs for a minute. Um, would you encourage 
high school singers graduating this year to, to look into that if they feel they need it? Well, I, I, I'll hand that over to Mrs. Perkins, but those students would no longer be obviously students of the Quincy Public Schools officially. Right. So, but Mrs. Perkins can address that. I would encourage them, you know, if they if they were looking for something to do and they had some time and they were willing to volunteer, mm. you know, I mean, I think we have some really great programs and kids uh, in, in younger grades, you know, in middle school or in elementary school who would really benefit from a high school mentor. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, something like that. So I do think, you know, we, we want our students to come back to us when they leave us and keep in touch and maybe, you know, if they are interested in going in education, come back and teach for us someday. So, um, so I think that, you know, students who are looking maybe for something to do and um, want to give back, I think that, you know, volunteering at one of our summer programs would be a great option. Sure. Yeah. Nice way. Maybe they have an older uh, uh, sibling, you know, that they want to mentor uh, throughout the summertime. Might be a good way yeah. to, to pass off some, uh, some information and some expertise. Um, curious, in speaking with uh, Representative uh, Chan, it looks like the state is going to fund the Student Opportunity Act that wasn't uh, funded last year. And any sense for how that might be benefiting the Quincy Public Schools? So with the Student Opportunity Act, the areas of focus uh, were essentially low income, uh, special education, uh, and EL. Uh, so we'll be certainly looking at those areas uh, as we did last year to address uh, any disparities um, uh, in education in those areas. And any funds that we do get from the Student Opportunity Act, as we did last year, will likely go to those areas as the statute uh, requires. So um, an increase in translation services, certainly for our EL population, just generally in a special education program is going to be a focus. I know of myself and Mrs. Perkins, uh, making sure that our uh, students and parents um, can effectively uh, communicate um, within the system is essential from our point of view. That's why we wanna make sure that our translation services are essentially as best as they can be in making sure that all critical documents needed for a student's education are translated and translated in a timely manner. Uh, so that would be an area, just one example, um, that we would be seeking to increase in the next um, budget. Um, obviously, special education and uh, helping our low-income students has uh, always been a priority here in Quincy, but with the SOA money coming in, we will have additional funding to help uh, with those initiatives moving forward as well. That could include, um, uh, you know, initiatives that uh, we already have built with Quincy College, including early college initiatives, getting students, both um, uh, low-income EL and special education students interested in the early college avenue um, path um, again, those are just some examples as to what we're, we're focusing on. I know Mrs. Perkins may have uh, other areas that I may have forgotten. So, well, I think I just agree with everything you said. I think that, you know, for us, certainly a priority, I, I would agree with uh, Superintendent Mulvey, is, you know, the translations and um, making sure that our families feel like they have the opportunity to have uh, meaningful access to their child's educational experience. So I think that's an area that we've both identified um, as something we want to focus on and, and hopefully grow and build. Sure. So what will be um, the priorities over the summertime, you know, getting ready for fall 2021? What, uh, what needs to be done? So our uh, next big priority, which we're actually beginning to work on now, um, it involves vaccination, believe it or not. Yep. Um, so I, I do have to uh, give a shout out to Manic Community Health, um, their CEO, Cynthia Sierra, Sierra and Kim Kroger has been working directly with us. My assistant, uh, uh, Laura Owens, essentially has scheduled and uh, effectively vaccinated about 300 uh, QPS staff, professional and non-professional staff. Uh, and we have available vaccines for those that want it. Um, there, we are now in the process of potentially rolling out a um, 
a program where we begin vaccinating students within the system 16 years uh, of age or older. And we're looking at that now and we're uh, determining how quickly we can do that. Obviously, we would be only focused on those students and parents that wish mm -hmm. to have that opportunity. Uh, and it would be obviously voluntary. But um, because of the efforts of Man and Health and our staff here in the Quincy Public Schools, including our nursing staff, um, we have effectively uh, vaccinated most of our staff and many of our staff have received vaccinations on their own. So Quincy's in, in very good shape and now we'll begin to focus on those students who wish to, um, to be vaccinated so that when we do return to school in the fall in September, we're hoping uh, that we will return to as normal as possible. And certainly we'll be ready. Um, we're working now, uh, myself, Mrs. Perkins and the SLT are working on um, staffing and programming already for September in the hopes that it will be a, a normal year. And I know Mrs. Perkins has initiatives as well that she'd probably like to highlight. Sure. Yeah, no, I mean, I think, you know, like you say, our, our focus for the summer is absolutely going to be, you know, getting ready. And um, I think one of the things that I, I would probably like to highlight is, you know, we talked a lot about the big summer programs and things that might be, you know, anywhere from a week to four weeks in length or five weeks. Um, but then we also recognize that we need to provide, you know, site-based opportunities for students to engage within their school. So prior to the school year, are starting so we're working with the principals to try to help ease that transition we're really we're really focused on making the transition especially for our remote students students that haven't been in school or even our students who have been in school but have been in classes with 10 students you know or, or things like that so that's a concern for us that we're then that's a focus and so you know we're t working with our principals so that to make sure that we offer you know field days or um, social events you know at at each one of our sites throughout the summer picnics you know teddy bear picnics or um, different things like that where um, students can bring you know bring their family and come and have a safe and healthy uh, socially distant of course you know event that gets them back into that school community gets them used to a larger crowd mm -hmm. um, hopefully helps them to see friends that they haven't seen you know in a very long time and we have kindergarten students who have never walked in the doors of our school buildings and that is a huge concern for us and so we want to make sure that everything we do this summer is focused on supporting those families and supporting those children so that they start Quincy Public Schools all of our kids start Quincy Public Schools on a good foot and um, we have a really great hopefully normal as possible healthy school year yeah Anything that needs to be done in the actual buildings, the facilities, any changes that need to happen before the fall? Um, that's a, a great question and it, it gives me the opportunity to thank uh, Paul Hines and um, Dave Scott of the, Quin of the uh, City of Quincy Building Department the, uh, and also the mayor because he, the mayor has committed uh, since mm, this began in March of last year to really overhauling our buildings, particularly the ventilation. Uh, and they have done a fantastic job as well as providing um, standalone air purifiers with, you know, where they're, where they need to be within the uh, school department. So with regard to facilities, obviously there, there are always things that need to be done, but with regard to health and safety since last March and certainly over the summer when we were preparing for a turn um, to school last September, a huge amount of work was done uh, to make sure that our schools were up and running and uh, safe for our students and staff. So we're very happy and pleased to say that we're in very good shape with regard to facilities. And obviously there is obviously facility work to be done uh, over the summer that Mr. Hines has a long list uh, typically to do, but that is more in regard to um, you know, painting and uh, sprucing up as opposed to um, large projects on, say, ventilation, which have already been done. They were done last summer. So um, aside from, from that, we're Quincy and the school department and the school buildings are in very good shape. And again, thanks to the building department and the mayor for that. 
That's great. Sounds like uh, you're ready to cap off a great uh, year this summer and, uh, and already uh, thinking ahead to the fall. Absolutely. We're, we should be and we will be ready to go. Anything else uh, neither one of you would like to add right now? I just want to thank the parents and students for their patience over the past, well, over um, 14 months since last March, really, because it really has been a roller coaster from September and waiting for the Chromebooks to arrive so that we could effectively begin remote instruction to phasing into hybrid and then finally phasing into in-person learning. The uh, students and parents have been exceedingly patient uh, and they have persevered. And certainly, as I said earlier, this in Quincy, at least, it will not be a wasted year. Our kids have been, students have been uh, progressing educationally and socially and emotionally. And we're very happy um, that uh, we were able to do what we could do uh, here in Quincy. And we're committed to making sure that we continue that goal moving forward of giving our kids in Quincy the best possible education, social, emotionally, as well uh, as possible. So speaking of those Chromebooks, do they have to return those, Mr. Mulvey? Uh, we will have uh, a return of those Chromebooks because we want to make sure uh, that um, obviously we get the Chromebooks from the seniors, but we also want to make sure that when the Chromebooks um, are reissued in September, that they are ready to go in very good operating shape. Uh, there may be some students who will need them over the summertime, right. but we'll work with those students, but we want to get them back. We want to make sure they're, and got good operating shape, and then we'll reissue them in September. Okay, very good. Yeah. Anything else, Mrs. Perkins? Well, I just, you know, I just want to just reiterate what Superintendent Mulvey said, and um, you know, just how thankful we are for our, our parents, our staff. It's it's definitely taken a village this year, you know, and uh, so we're we're just so grateful for all the help and support that we've received, and you know, I think that Superintendent Mulvey did a a phenomenal job uh, communicating with parents and staff last summer. And, you know, we're here and we're, we'll, we'll keep, you know, keep doing that. So there's no surprises for parents as we, or, or staff as we return for the fall. So um, we're in, you know, we're always here for any parents that have concerns or are nervous or, you know, uh, feeling unsure. Um, you know, we, we hope that they feel comfortable to reach out to us and, and we're happy to help them through this transition. Yeah, I couldn't help but think as you were speaking about, uh, you know, the 10 students per classroom and, and kids that have never been in the schools, it's going to be an equally uh, dramatic shift for the teachers, right, to have a full classroom of kids and, and the staff of each school building. It is. Yeah, it definitely is. And, you know, I mean, we also have teachers who haven't been in the buildings, you know, because they've been teaching our remote classes because we needed we did need you know, staff to do that this year. So, um, so it's going to, it's going to be a transition for everyone. And I think, you know, the superintendent, you know, said it very well. We're, we're just, we're just, we're here to support and we, um, and, you know, we're, we're here to listen and, and hopefully, you know, work, work really hard this summer to have a great school year. I know um, QuincyPublicSchools.com is the web made website and it's always kept up to date. Great way to communicate uh, with the school departments. It is. Absolutely. Yep. I want to thank you both. Really appreciate the, the time. And uh, please feel free to reach out here at QATV. If we can be of any more assistance, uh, we'd be happy to do it. Great. Thank you very much, Joe. Great to see you. Thanks for having us. You're very welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. Special thanks to Kevin Mulvey and Aaron Perkins for joining us today. Thank you to our crew. Thank you for watching. On Monday at 1130, we'll get an update from Kim Calvey of the Friends of the Thomas Crane Public Library. And an invitation for you to please visit our website at QATV.org. You'll find all of our latest programs there. There's news and information, video on demand, live streaming, and a whole lot more. For all of us here at Quincy Access Television, I'm Joe Catalano. Please stay safe.